I just ask you personally, are you at the moment leave or remain? I think that uh, we should remain in the EU. I've always said that. Uh, but our policy is to put it to the people and to get them to decide. So I suppose in the end it doesn't really matter what I think. What matters is what the public thinks. And we need to put a proper deal to them versus Remain and find out what they say. That's okay. what our policy is. Okay, but just to establish, so you're the Shadow Foreign Secretary and presumably would be involved in the negotiations over this great new deal. What motivation would you have as a Remainer to get a great deal to leave? Well, because we're going to be putting it back to the people, so they may decide that they want to, to leave, and so we need to have the best deal possible for jobs and the economy in case that's what the public decides that they want to do. But if it's a fantastic deal, wouldn't it persuade people to vote for it, in which case leave well, would win the referendum again? Well... Listen, it's our duty to make sure we get the best deal possible. I personally would see it as an insurance policy because I would hope that the public would decide to leave. But in the end, it's going to be up to them whether Sorry, we leave or whether we remain. Sorry, you'd hope that people would decide to Sorry, leave. To, to remain. So right, I so you can see why decide. people are confused here because yeah, you no, would I'm go sorry, and negotiate. Slip of, slip, of, slip of the tongue. Yeah, on my but part. I mean, but it illustrates a point, doesn't it? That actually you go now, and it negotiate. Now illustrates that it's quarter to seven in the morning. I'm sorry. I, what, I'm, <laughs> what I'm saying is, is that we would negotiate the best deal that we possibly could. And that would be one that would look after jobs and the economy. We would put it to the people and we would say, now look, three years ago, four years ago, you decided that you wanted to leave, but this is what it looks like. You know, and there are compromises. You won't get everything that you want because, frankly, there is no perfect leave deal where you can get everything you were promised during the referendum. But this is what reality looks like versus remain. What do you want to do? How many, how many of the top shadow cabinet are leavers? I don't know. You'll have to ask them. Can you name, the, can you name one? Uh, I'm not going to get into personalities here. I because don't in want the one end, name. Is there one member of that shadow cabinet, top, top tier, who's well, a lever? Jeremy think, Corbyn, for instance. Well, we, know think, that, we know that many, many of your, of your voters, Labour voters, voted to leave. But do, does anybody yeah. at the top of the shadow cabinet actually want us to leave? And if I the think, answer is you can't think of any which is in itself rather telling, what kind of deal do you think you're going to screw from the EU when they so, think that the entire shadow cabinet from the top down basically doesn't want to leave? And so they I, don't want us to leave either. So I think that one person who's on the record is saying that they are keen to leave is Ian Lavery. Um, he's the chair of the party and he represents a, a northern seat and I think he thinks quite, quite strongly about that. <laughs> Why don't you just be more honest, really? Which is I'm being completely honest. You're with not you. really. What you're yes, really you all want you want your cake and eat it, Labour. You've been sitting on this fence so far. You've all got splinters, right? No. Here's here's the bottom line. There there is zero incentive of the EU. If you were to get into power and win this election, the EU knows that 99% of the shadow cabinet doesn't want to leave. They don't want us to leave either. And yet you want to try and persuade the public that somehow this is going to be fair-minded, that somehow you're going to go in there and hardball negotiate a brilliant deal with the EU. It makes zero sense that that would happen. It, Why it, would anybody around that table be looking to do a great deal for us to leave when 99% of you want to stay in? The point is this, is that it goes back to the people. The people will be the ones who will be deciding. And what do we do? If you're we not going to give let, the let, people Piers, a choice on, let between... Me, let me talk. Let you me keep, talk. No, hang on. No, no you no, let no, me no. talk. You all keep right, saying on, the you people. Go. No, go, go, go. All on. right, I will. No, Thank you. No, I will. All right, no, I can do that. I can do that too. question if you give me a minute. All no, right. OK, but my point is, you must surely understand the point, which is, you keep saying we're going to give the public you this great... you said it a couple of times, yeah, and, but you and keep I'd like saying to answer we're gonna, it. You keep saying we're going to give the public this great choice to a great deal and remain. In fact, what's going to happen in reality, because nobody around that negotiating table actually wants to leave, you're going to have a very watered-down deal, which no-one's going to think bears any relation to Brexit, or staying in. And then I put it to you, the public are given a choice, really, between a version of Remain and full Remain. Do I speak now? Yes. OK. So, 
So the situation is this, is that we want to be able to negotiate a deal which has been the sort of deal that we have been talking to the Europeans about for more than three years, right? So it is being in a customs union, being close to a single market, having close alignment of rules and regulations. We have talked to them uphill and down dale about what it is that we would do and what our deal is. And we think that that's the best way of looking after jobs in the economy. And quite frankly, that's what Theresa May should have called us into a room about and said, what kind of way do you want to leave the European but Union? Emily and we would have told her. Staying part and of then, the customs union oh, means man, that we wouldn't be able to do trade deals with the rest of the world. Staying in the single market means that we'd have to sign up to the four freedoms, including freedom of movement. We'd still be paying in, but we wouldn't get any voting rights. I mean, it is just remain minus, isn't it? Being in a customs union means that we are not vulnerable to the likes of Donald Trump, who has been talking about trying to put the National Health Service on the table when it comes to negotiations with America on a trade deal. We've already heard, haven't we, about the way in which the government are preparing for us leaving the European Union by negotiating with U.S pharmaceutical companies to make the National Health Service spend even more on American pharmaceuticals. And, you know, we, if we open up a trade deal to America, we could end up with all this chlorinated chicken and, and beef with all these hormones in. And, and basically, we're vulnerable because there we are, just as Britain. So at a you time don't when... want us to strike trade deals with the rest of the world. You I want think... to stay in the EU for the purposes of trade exclusively. So this is the point. People, Brexiteers, well... will look at your choice as you're offering in this second referendum and think it's actually not a choice at all because you're not offering a leave option. Okay, and as you are majority is... Remainers, you don't have an incentive let to me... offer a leave option.